this would be a great time to lean into our Q&A section of our talk. For those who are familiar with my work, uh, familiar with my um, my my channel, my podcast, everything, this is time for Q&A. This is your chance to ask me questions directly. Uh, simply write the word question, then post the question thereafter, or you can purchase a super sticker, super chat. There's a little dollar sign in the chat box. All the monies go from the super sticker, super chat goes to a scholarship fund in the name of my son, Connor Asley. That's a picture of him right there. And that's one of them right there. He's my son who passed away almost four years ago. And in his honor, I've started a scholarship fund to uh, help defray, to, to promote things like the Hoffman process insight seminars, and also to help defray the cost of personal development for those in need. So before I take questions, and I see we already have a few that come in, I have a personal share with everyone. And that is, um, recently I had a, someone posted a comment um, on one of my videos, and they said, Jonathan, your personal life is not exactly a role model for relationship nirvana. And I posted this on my community page and I want to share with my response because I had, I also wanted to share with you a personal reflection on this. But here's my response to this person. How much of my personal life do you really know? With that said, I'm here, with that said, I'm here to say that the dating marketplace is a mess and I'm experiencing many of the frustration all folks experience. This makes me human. And that's why, I'm, and that's what I'm modeling being a human. Plus, I encourage personal development, self-help, and spiritual work as an antidote for the chaos, and I do my best to live my life from a spiritual perspective. And let me say this. I'm not even close to perfect, and some days I'm cynical, some days I'm upbeat, some days I'm downright righteous. While I'm not perfect, I know my mission is to be a wake-up call for many humans in the dating realm. At the same time, I have amazing relationships with so many people, and I do my best to be happy, to be a happy and fun person in my personal life. And for the record, I feel like I live a blessed life, which feels like nirvana to me. Why well, I wanted to share that with you, everybody, is in the days after posting that, I had an interesting awareness. And I wanted to share this with you, role modeling what I believe some of you might be experiencing, and you can let me know in the comments if that's the case. So I got married in my 20s, followed the blueprint I was supposed to follow, was married for 12 years, uh, knew her I think a total of 15 years, and we got a divorce. And after the divorce, I was ridiculously dysfunctional because I'd lost my quarter million dollar a year job, and I got wiped out in the market class crash of 2008 and nine. And my life for the next dec half decade was absolutely dysfunctional. Mm. Not quite half, half decade, but for at least two or three years before I found my passion being a dating and relationship coach. And a few years later, after beginning my journey in this profession, I met a woman. And uh, we went on to have a six-year on-again, off-again relationship. I'm not proud of the fact we were on again, off again. I do believe we came into our lives to each other to heal one another. And I was, she accepted me in one of my darkest, deepest places in my life. I, in fact, ladies, I wouldn't recommend what she did. And that was to choose me because I wasn't in a good place. In fact, I was so des, uh, I was so depressed and financially, you know, bankrupt that I was actually living with my mom and dad in a retirement community at age 40. And this was after living in a $2 million home prior to my divorce. Why I'm sharing this with you is that relationship wasn't a role model of anything other than just me being human. And that relationship ended in 2017. And as I've reflected on the five or six years, the five years since then, why haven't I been able to attract a relationship? And I want to share with you all publicly, because what I'm doing my best to role model is vulnerability, authenticity, and transparency. So 
six months after she, uh, my relationship ended, I lost my mother to cancer. She was 88 years old. And while that didn't overly affect me, that certainly was, you know, partially, I was a bit emotionally consumed by that. And then six months later, I lost my 19-year-old son to an accident. And that brought me to my knees on so many levels. And the idea of being in a relationship while I wanted companionship, while I wanted connection, while I wanted sex, I certainly wasn't in a position to do that because I was, and I was also, I didn't even feel like working in 2018 and 19. I was probably at a low point in my professional life. I'm still helping people in the dating, mating, and relating realm, but emotionally, I was going through chaos. And so I put my attention to writing a book two months after Connor passed away. Again, my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? And I immersed myself in this book as a way to heal myself. And during that time, I'd done the Hoffman process. During that time, I'd done insight seminars in the last five years. What I also realized is that what was happening here in the United States was highly affecting me from my ability to really lean into a relationship with anybody. And we we are divided here in the country from a political perspective. And that divide hurts me deeply. And I'll just be candid with you. I cannot stand ideologies that are, are, are separate from one another whether you're on the right, whether you're on the left, whether you're vaccine or no vaccine, whether you're mask or no mask. The last four years in particular, and with the, with the COVID as well, it's made me very difficult to feel safe with human beings because there's so much rigid ideologies, political politics, identity politics, People that are so overly sensitive that God forbid you didn't call them the right pronouns, you lose your job over it. And this hurts me deeply. And it's made it very difficult to want to lean into trusting another human being on an emotional level. And I suspect I'm not alone with this. I feel like I am definitely not alone with this because, folks, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a centrist or I don't moderate or whatever it is. I, I just believe we should do our best to try to find solutions rather than sticking to our individual ideologies. That's just how I operate because that's what love would do. And that's how love would respond. And yet at the same time, I've created a very small world for myself, meaning I, even people that are close friends of mine have had difficulties wanting to connect with them because the ideologies are so rigid to one side or the other. And this has made me very nervous putting myself in the dating realm because there are people that their ideologies are very, very clearly stated on the dating apps. And I just don't know if I want to go down that road. So why am I not in a relationship? I certainly believe the last four years of my life between between losing my mother, losing Connor and what's happened here in the United States and and certainly globally has made me less trusting of people. And I don't like that. I don't like that I'm not feeling trusting of people. I know this is my own issue, but if I really looked in the mirror after reading that comment, it's because it doesn't feel safe anymore. There's no real tribe. It, it, it didn't, you know, it was someone once said it takes a village. And I don't believe if it, it feels like whether we're in the tribe, our village, our community, it feels so isolated these days. And it's certainly COVID didn't help that for so many of us that were, you know, that worked from home by ourselves. And so I only share this just as simply to state that no human being is perfect. And the minute we put any individual out there who has a public platform like I do in some capacity of being perfect, you're setting me up for failure because I can never live up to perfection. I am ridiculously imperfect. My communication, my speech sometimes, my my thinking, my thoughts, my judgments, my resentments, my guilt, my shame. I am riddled with flaws. I'm not even perfect in the dating realm. 
And so all I can do is have love and compassion for myself because I do my best to live un under the, the four agreements. If you're not familiar with the four agreements, I'm pulling out this book right now. Do your best. Be impeccable with your wor word. Don't make assumptions and projections of others is, or per perceptions of people of others is just they're merely projections of you. And so I invite you all, the reason why I recommend all these books over and over again, because look at, you may not be as fucked up as I am. Believe me, I have got shit in my childhood that, I mean, has put up walls and armor and even in my adult life that has walls and armor. And hopefully you're not as messed up as I am, but I spend every day peeling the onion every day to try to be the best version of myself. And that's my invitation for everyone because we cannot be dependent upon romantic relationships to solve our individual desire to want others to love us for us to feel good about ourselves. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. I'll come back and read the comments later.